Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. We are back in Foundry VTT and we are continuing with building Fandelva and below. And we are on to chapter four, Wave Echo Cave, which is the only location in this chapter. Uh, and it brings to a conclusion the first, effectively the first half of the module where we're gonna stop and take a segue. Now just be aware that this might be the last video for a few days uh, because I'm going to be away for a few days. So if it all goes suddenly quiet, don't panic. <laughs> all right, I've cheated slightly. I've got slightly ahead of ourselves here um, and opened the journal. It's got nothing to do with the fact I started recording and uh, and the footage went all weird. Not at all, honest gov. Um, but I started with Wave Echo Cave, just the cave entrance. I haven't even put the uh, the marker out there, which is fine. So the cave entrance here, um, the entrance tunnel leads to, just make sure you can actually see that, um, to a large natural cavern supported by a pillar of rock in the western part of the cave. Behind a pillar are three bed rolls and a heap of ordinary supplies, sacks of flour, bags of salt, casks of salt meat, etc, etc, etc. Amid the supplies you see the body of a dwarf, dead for at least a week. Right, I need a corpse. <laughs> Um, what should we use for a corpse? It doesn't really matter what we use because um, we're just going to rename it. Let's shove a bandit out there. Okay, so this is going to be our corpse. Uh, I want to double click this. I want to change this. To dwarf corpse. We're going to update our picture as well. Uh, and in the best traditions I have actually pre-prepared for once. Somewhere I have, there we go, I've got a picture of a dead Thardin. So let's bring him over. That's going to be, let's just zoom it in slightly, that's going to be our dead dwarf. Where did I get that image from? That was from Mid Journey. Um, just using the Mid Journey AI art generating bot that you get in, you can get in Discord, um, but it is a pay for. So just, um, you have to pay for that uh, subscription. Right, do I need anything else on here? What I do need to do is just double check that this says Dead Dwarf. Doesn't matter what the representative actor is, it's, oh, <laughs> can't even type. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter what the representative actor is or any of that lot, it's not doing anything, it's just going to be there uh, and we're gonna slump him in the corner there lovely jubbly um what i do want to do having done that is just make sure it whoops double right click just make sure we haven't got anything like we never display that uh we don't want vision on that's all right lovely 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 we can do that okay good right where's that journal back uh so we've got dead dwarf but we've also got a big pile of stuff uh, and some bed rolls now let's go to our tiles uh, and look at our tiles browser because what would be nice is if we had um, hmm in modules might we have in fact it might not be in there at all we might have in core data we might have some stuff um, possibly in icons that we could use consumables containers creatures dice environments settlement perhaps we don't want buildings that's for sure uh, what I'm looking for, of course, is something that looks a bit like uh, wilderness, isn't it? Traps is not going to be what we want. Uh, creatures, settlement, I've looked at your Muppet. People, nope, we don't want that either. Um, I might get back to you in a moment when <laughs> I found something. Uh, survival. Yeah, not liking these images. They're very, very cartoony. Okay, we can come back to that. But what we do need to do is put down an item pile with the rest of these things in it. So just to highlight, this says sacks of flour, bags of salt, casks of salt meat, lanterns, etc. So let's create an item pile with a whole bunch of that stuff in. Um, da, 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 da. Let's go directly to the SRD. Let's go to items. Let's find what we need. All right, so the first thing we can do is go pickaxe. Miner's pickaxe. Let's drag that in. That's going to create our um, our pile immediately. Okay. So, excuse me. If I double click on this, thank you very much. I can open this up. Um, so we are going to say 
There's three of those. We're going to need flour. Is there any flour? Nope. Um, salt, casks of salted meat, lanterns. Yep, we can certainly put hooded lantern and a bullseye lantern. We could put two of those, four of those. Remember, these are supplies for the mine to get started and up and running. Um, we've got lamp oil. We're going to need that. Now, actually, weirdly enough, this could be quite a profitable little uh, <laughs> thing if they decide to take all of these back. Uh, we've got pickaxe. We need shovels. Brilliant. Then we can have five shovels uh, and other gear. Amid the supplies, you see the body of a dwarf. Okay. So... Um, Let's see what we've got in the trade goods when it comes to things like, whoops, if I can type flour. Okay, let's put in some flour. We can put in some meat. Ugh. Meat. Nope, we can't. Um, salt. We can put salt in as well. Uh, bags of salt, casks of salted meat, lanterns, flasks. Okay, so I'm fine with that. Um, we're going to update that. We want to configure this to be a if it's a container. Just have it as an item pile, I think. I think we'll just have it as an item pile. That's fine. Main settings. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Don't need a macro or anything like that. Delete when empty. Yes, I suspect it won't be empty. That's all good. Uh, if I double right click this, we can change the name of it. Um, minor supplies. That's what we can call it. And we can go to appearance and we can find a more suitable um, thing for that. So we don't want tools. Um, we want equipment. Chest. Uh, is it chest we want? Oh no, this is equipment to wear on your chest. We don't want that. We want containers. Uh, let's have boxes. Let's have a worn crate grey. Let's go with that. There we go. That will do very much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, don't really want it to display the name. Never display the name. That's fine. They can just find those. Off they go. Right, so... Um, duh, 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 duh. That will do. Um, the northeast section of the cavern uh, has collapsed. We've got this 10 foot wide pit. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So it talks about the open pit being able to go to area two and three. Uh, a goblin body slumped at the bottom of the pit. Strange goblin. So this is one of the uh, psionic goblin. So let's shove him down there um, and we'll make him dead. Okay. Uh, we're not going to hide him. We're just going to leave him slumped in the corner there. In fact, let's make him prone as well. Uh, and that way, the characters may well, when they come in and they wander through here, um, Haley's got her light source on at the moment, they see a goblin. There might be immediate panic that they've seen a goblin, and it's not until they take a moment to look that they'll realise it's not actually alive. So that's quite nice. quite like that. Uh, treasure. Thardin wears a cloak of protection, protection, which the spider overlooked. So, I need a cloak of protection. I think I'm going to put that as part of this item pile, to be honest with you, rather than messing around with another item pile. Uh, ingots, jewellery... No, get rid of that. Close, close, close. Cloak of protection. Let's shove it in there. All right? So, this cloak of protection, let's just make sure that this kind of looks like it should work. Um, effects, there we go plus one AC and saves cloak of protection, good everything seems to be set up on that, alright that, okay, that's area one that's all we need to do for that uh, let's do, uh, move on to area two, and this is pretty much all we're going to have today is uh, a bit of this mine tunnels again we want it to be a map location this is area two, uh, and you know how this works. We copy and paste from the module. 
managed to put my microphone in a funny place today. For whatever reason, just sits right in my way. Okay, and then this is a fairly easy bit. So this just talks about a maze of passages in the old section of the original mine site. Lurking in one dead end is an orca jelly. So, do it. Oh, uh, let's bring that in. Lovely jubbly. Uh, you can decide the jelly's exact location. Oh, that's generous of you. Uh, when the planters, party enters the section of the mine, the jelly begins stalking the group, instinctively waiting for an opportunity to attack a lone target. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. All right low target uh, low ceiling sorry and we pop that in there okay so because of the low ceilings in this area medium and larger creatures have disadvantage on melee weapon and attack rolls that's nasty isn't it <laughs> so uh yeah yeah nice bit of color for it so all we need to do here is slap out this number two which can go pretty much anywhere uh, and then we need an orca jelly it's if by magic, I just copied one across from the uh, from the SRD a little bit earlier. Um, where should we stick it? I'm going to stick it there. Okay. Um, now it's going to start stalking them. Let's just check orca jellies. I haven't used orca jellies for a while, so the features are spider climb, amorphous, split, yeah, pseudopod. Yeah. Okay. Nothing particularly unexpected there, which is good. I'm going to stick it there. Um, which means they are most likely to enter down here. And then as they start to decide which directions to go, I'm going to be moving the Orca Jelly um, to preferably come round behind them um, or try and, you know, if they go left or down here, try to cut them off or something like that. Um, but I will be trying to, <laughs> trying to move it in a way that matches the correct speed and things like that. It's a little game of uh, Pac-Man that they don't know is happening. Okie dokie. All right, next. The next area is the old entrance. So another map location. This is number three. Uh, and this location is actually... Um, it's this bit just here. So this is part of the old entrance. Let's do our fun copy and pasty bits. There we go. And the rest of it. All right, so four tunnels intersect. Let's, uh, let's slap that out here back so the four tunnels intersect at this 30 foot high cavern the walls are carved with simple relief showing dwarf and no miners at work nearly two dozen skeletons in rusted scraps of armor are scattered across the, the cavern floor some are dwarf skeletons while others appear to be remains of larger individuals half a dozen large unlit brass lanterns stand in niches or on ledges around the cavern uh, Okay, the tunnel runs south was the original entrance, so down here. But it's been buried by the destruction that wrecked the mine centuries ago. A pitched battle was fought here when the bandits stormed the mines. The dead still lie where they fell. Uh, six Sturges. Oh, I don't want to... Sturge. There we go. So, six sturge um, cling to the ceiling. The monsters find scant living prey in the mines and are ravenous. Each character, uh, sorry, since the characters are probably looking at the skeletons on the floor, the sturges are likely to get the drop on them. Every character who isn't watching the ceiling must succeed on A. Right, just putting a skill check here. Um, so, skill based on the ability or wisdom. And the skill is perception. DC 14. Check to avoid being surprised. The characters aren't surprised. Here, the Sturges. 
Oh, I can leave that one. Uh, descending to attack. The lanterns and the carvings of the miners' work were meant to welcome newcomers. Right, so I need to put my Sturges out. Um, where are Sturges? Are land of beasts? Oh, indeed. So let's stick my Sturges out. Now remember, these are tiny, so there's six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now all of those I want to have hidden. So they are going to get surprised. Now it talks about the, t the nearly two dozen skeletons. While they are not actually undead, I think I want to put out a whole bunch of skeletons in here because I know how much it will freak out the party when they walk in here. And they see the whole place is absolutely full of skeletons. Because they're going to freak, aren't they? And that's exactly what I want them to do. Now, I know, and you know, oh, there we go, uh, that these skeletons are not doing anything. They're just dead. But I want them freaking out. I want them to be really, really cautious moving through this area, wondering what the hell is going on. Um, why are there all these skeletons here? And pretty much ready to have a fight that they don't need to have. Then they get jumped by the Sturges. Okay, so I'm happy with that. It just makes that slightly more interesting by putting it that way. Um, next, we want to do the uh, these bottom two rooms here. So this is area four and area five. So area four is the old guard room. Make sure we put that as a map location. Create that area four. Lovely. Save that and we can drag that straight out over there. And then we're going to have area five, which is the assayer's office. So an assayer is somebody who checks the quality of the precious metals and things like that, in case you didn't know. Because it's not a word we encounter very often, is it? <laughs> All right. So the old guard room then, what have we got going on there? Anything of particular interest? Well, obviously, we've got a description. Let's copy and paste that in. Make that bold. And then we've just got a bit of... Under there, thank you very much, flavour text. All right, so splintered stone benches. So we're down here. Uh, and heaps of rubble from a partially collapsed ceiling, uh, sorry, from a partially collapsed ceiling, fill this room. Amid ruined stone bunks and toppled weapon racks are eight corpses, including the rotting remains of two ogres. In the round after any living creature enters this chamber, dead creatures clamber to their feet to attack. The two ogre zombies and six dwarf zombies fight until destroyed. Oof. I'm going to stick that in there, stick that in there. Let me put my undead in my undead folder. Uh, and then was it six normal ones, was it? Uh, yeah. I say normal ones. Dwarf zombies. And we can just scatter these liberally around here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now again, I'm going to select all of those and I'm just going to mark them as prone. No, all of them. I thought... Oh, I'll do them all individually then, shall I? <laughs> Whatever. This is why sometimes it's better to do one and then just copy and paste the others out, but I copied and pasted too early. Uh, 
Okay, so bearing in mind they would have just come through this chamber full of all of these skeletons where nothing happened. They're going to come in here and probably assume the same and start searching and they're going to get quite a surprise. I like that. Yes, that's mean. I like being... No, it's not mean. It's, it's a little bit mean, isn't it? <laughs> all right. And now we've got the assayer's office here. Make that bold. Pop our line in. Okay, anything interesting here? We've just got some treasure in this one. So the centuries-old paper in the cubby holes uh, disintegrates if touched, but the character who reads Dwarfish can see faint markings on a few scraps recording weigh-ins and disbursements. Uh, treasure. Behind the counter sits a locked iron strongbox um, requiring thief tools and a, success, a successful D20 dexterity check to open. Um, chest uh, contains 600, so we've got a thingy full of gold here. Now sometimes the easiest way to create, a, if we just chuck any item out and create our pile, uh, then what we can do is double click this and then we can add the currency. And it's just a bit easier than creating it without you know just straight with currency so 600 copper easy 90 electrum they do love this electrum in this module uh, 180 silver it's quite a lot of money uh, and 60 gold relative relatively quite a lot of money all right we can get rid of that then want to do that i didn't want to do any of that <laughs> my ability to click has gone bananas and get uh, update there we go that's it update the pile then it's gone okay so we can just throw that money out there um that's all we need configure pile is just going to be a normal item pile that's fine lovely close that double right click um now we said that this was i don't want i don't want it a standard item pile silly boy no, configure pile. We want this to be a container. Um, and then, yes, we want images for our boxes. Uh, boxes, we want a chest. Let's go with a, a reinforced cherry. Now, again, we can use different. Sorry, can't do two things at once, you know that. Uh, we can use different images to show it open, closed, etc. We know that. Uh, I, I'm not sure that I really need to worry about that myself, to be honest. Um, da, 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 da. Nope, don't need any of that. That's fine. We can just stick that in there. Good. Double right click. Get. Oh, it doesn't matter what that says, actually. We just want it never displayed. Doesn't matter what it's actually called. Okay. So we've got this. So this is behind the counter sits a locked iron strong box requiring thieves tools. Brilliant. So they can't open that um, unless they make a roll. That's fine. We can do that. Easy peasy. Now I could mess around by, you know, integrating it into the item and they click on it. It forces them to make a roll. Um, but to be honest, I don't really care. If I grab Hayley, Hayley, come to the rescue. If I drag Hayley and get a walk all the way over here. Oh, by the way, um, Segway, you know how I like to do those. Playing with walls. After looking at wall heights, I have created these walls. In the last video, I took these out. I've put them back in uh, and I've made them four foot high. So if I just double, let me double click on this. So wall height is infinite, but the bottom of the, of the wall I've made at four foot. The reason why is tall characters like Hayley can't actually see beyond there. Uh, let me reset the... Reset the fog of war. Okay. So tall characters like Haley cannot actually see up these tunnels just by being close to it until they actually go through that tunnel. Then they can see beyond it. So that's kind of how I wanted that to work until they duck down. And I thought that's how I had this wall working as well. And I haven't. Um, Hang on a minute. What have I got? What have I got different on these two? This is normal, 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 normal. 
I've only right. So the only thing I did on this one was height. This one should be normal, 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 normal. Right, that should work the same for Haley as well on both of those now. So as she moves up here, you can see she her light source doesn't penetrate until she actually goes beyond it. Um, so that's why I wanted to do that. Um, I think I probably do want sight to be, to be able to go beyond that. And certainly light to be able to go beyond that. Doesn't limit light. I'm going to have to bring in a short character and just check this. We have segwayed. Always segway. Uh, I think Ronbar, you were you were shorty, weren't you? Uh, you're supposed to be a gnome. What do we set your height as? So his height currently it's calculating it automatically to be four and a half. I'm going to set him as three. So when Ronbar is approaching these, see he can see through this. Haley can't see through this. You can see her light's not penetrating beyond, but Rombar's is. Just because of that height difference. And I quite like that. And he can go off and do whatever. Because he's got dark vision as well. So that's how I want that to work. That's perfect. Lovely jubbly. I got distracted. What was I using Haley for? I was bringing Haley over here through all of these. I was bringing her down here. And we were going to. Oh, I was going to bring her into here, wasn't I? So if Haley wants to approach this lockbox and attempts to open it, um, it won't actually open for her. It won't do what it just did, because obviously I'm in as the DM. She will not be able to open that box. It's going to be locked for her. So then I can ask for the roll, etc. So I haven't got to worry about players just running in, opening it, and nicking all the treasure anyway, because I've locked it. Did lock it, didn't I? Yeah. All right. So that's the Assayer's Office pretty much done. Really, really simple little encounter. So there's lots of rooms in this, but they're not necessarily very complicated at all. Okay, so what else do we need to do? I think we'll just do a couple more, and we'll call this one to an end. I'm having some clicking problems in my other window, like a Muppet. Go away, thank you very much. Um, I want to be, go away, stupid thing. Uh, so area six is this middle chamber here. Okay, so let's add this on. Uh, and this is the south quarters. Make sure it's a map location again. It's number six. We can chuck that out in the middle here. Okay. Oh, it's down here. Uh... This was the miners' barracks. So this was the miners' barracks when the well, when the skilled delve was working in Echo Wave Cove, rested between shifts. Um, any character who listens at the partially open door, his faint crunching and splintering sounds, with a wisdom perception check. So that's if they actually listen at the door. Okay, so we want a skill check in here. Skill ability equals wisdom skill equals perception dc 10 and again we don't have to put those in it's written there i can just ask them to roll it it's really not necessary but uh, again not anybody not everybody watches all of these videos um which is obviously absolutely fine they're allowed to be wrong <laughs> And I, I totally get that these these videos of where we're just building encounters are nowhere near as uh, as interesting and as popular um, for a lot of people. And that's absolutely fine. Of course. Of course it is. All right. So uh, old stone bunks. Just put a little bit more gap in there. Old stone bunks in orderly rows. We've got some here. Line of the walls. The bones of half a dozen dwarves. Large bandits strewn about the place. Still clad in armour. Three grey hunched figures squat among the remains pouring at the scraps. And these are three ghouls from the pack in area w9 um, and they're eating at stuff so we need ghouls we've got ghouls let's stick them out one two three um let's put them let's put them conveniently around 
this this body here okay so we're going to stick them there this is a really straightforward encounter this one it's just another another fight nothing special going on here but what we're going to slowly build up for them to realize is just how many undead are in here um, and why that is a problem for um, Neznar although again Neznar's got all these troops on hand and apparently can't deal with a few undead okay one more just one more um, number seven which is this area oops this area just down here so we're going to add this one on uh, and this is the ruined the ruined storeroom Let's slap this one out area seven thank you very much so this is for the whole of this area oops thank you um just to stick that out of the way okay area seven the ruined storeroom there's only uh, 20 locations in this so we're actually almost halfway through although we are currently doing the really easy locations there are far more interesting things to happen as they get a bit further in because at the moment it is indeed it's just pretty much hacking around um, which is great everybody no not everybody most people love just to have a bit of a scrap it doesn't always have to be an intricate part of the plot sometimes just a punching punch up is good for the soul and of course from a campaign point of view it does help a that experience but b it helps soften them up for what's happening later such as two violet fungus <laughs> oh do like do not like it when it does that violent fungus so two violent fungi uh, lurk here one in the middle of the central fungi patch so let's find our oops plant violet fungus so dense carpets of weird fungus cover large sections of the floor in this cavern the growth includes puff balls a foot across uh, weird shelf fungus growing on stalactites um, large stalks caps blip 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 now what's interesting is the map pin is kind of here but we're talking about this whole area so let's read on before we pop our fungus in they're hard to notice amongst the other each character can attempt a we need a skill check ability for this is intel intelligence with the skill being nature dc 15 uh, check to spot the fungi before moving within their reach characters can safely avoid the fungi by staying close to the southern and eastern walls so if they stay close to the southern and eastern walls or over this side they can avoid the violet fungi the green grown fungi are harmless um, but they allow creatures in the cavern to see without the aid of dark vision or a light source so we want to put those in uh, this cave has hindered the spider's exploration Nesnar expects uh, suspects the mine's magic workshops are nearby but he's reluctant to risk facing the dangerous monsters here and this is what i mean i mean he's a drow he comes from the underdark uh, and with all of his minions and everything else he's too scared to come and deal with what actually is just a couple of violet fungi um there are serious holes in this adventure from that motivation and um as we said before we did a, a video about the problem with nesnar is he's just He's just a weak adversary. He's, his way he's created is really quite poor. Um, he's just some stats on a piece of paper. Uh, he's got nothing behind him at all. He's Actually, he's a coward. <laughs> I mean, really, though? Okay, so two violet fungi. I'm going to stick that one out there. And I'm going to stick... Well, I'm going to stick that one there. And I'm going to stick that one there. And again, the description doesn't really... You know, they talk about the ruined storeroom. Uh, are they talking about this area or are they talking about where this is um i'm going to put them in there that's where i want to do it uh now it does talk about the green glowing fungi so i do want to do that and put in some lights so let's uh create some 
lights in here. I'm just going to create quite a big one for the moment. Doesn't matter where I create it, I'm going to move it. All right, light color. Oh, it would be green. That's quite intense though, isn't it? <laughs> Turn that down. It needs to be green glowing fungi, not blinding. Uh, animation. Now we used... I don't want swirling rainbow. That's far too much. In Wave Echo Cave... No, we're in Wave Echo Cave. In the um, Stormwreck Isle, in the cave there, we used some... Uh, we had lots and lots of stuff, so I'm not sure if I want to do that. Ugh, def no, definitely not that. Um, mysterious. Oh, stop it. Mysterious emanation. No. I think we probably just want it just as... What about ghostly? We use something like that, but that's not what we want. I mean, we could. Let's let's pop that over there for the moment. Haley, can I borrow you again? Right, turn your torch off. How does that look? Apart from the fact that it doesn't look dark enough. Um, I'm not happy with this one. I think I'm going to get rid of the animation completely. Uh, and we're just going to have it like, like this. I'm going to make the bright radius one. One foot. Five foot. Thank you. Right. Bright for five foot dim for 15 uh, in fact actually I'm going to have the dim for 30 so it covers most of the room um, yeah that kind of green whoop, yeah we're going to turn that down don't worry turn down that intensity no animation right that is the only lights we've got. Good. Um, yeah. Not great, is it? Why is that not doing anything? It's done something strange here. Well, that's, that's why, isn't it? I've got two light sources, you nim nimble. Right, that's the one. Turn that one off. Thank you. Right, colour intensity. Slightly more intense. Now let's select Haley. Okay. Then what we can do is we can grab this other light source. Uh, and... This has got the ghostly light on with a slow animation speed. We can make this one um, bright to 5, dim to 10. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. We can make this more intense. And we can slap that pretty much over the other one. So we got a li Yeah, that's a bit better. We got a little bit of colour movement in there. Just want to move that further into the corner and that one further into the corner. I think that slightly layering them is better. That's all right. That will do. Okay. It's not as dark as we'd want it to be. Make it darker as it should be in here. Because in theory, Haley shouldn't be able to see anything at all. Um, she can put her own light on but when she's places like this see how much more atmospheric that is she's got her own light source turn that off it's now very very dark but we've got some green lights now I do want to turn that intensity up on these I think that might seem a bit silly because it is only supposed to be fungi 
but yeah, I think that's better. Okay, let's go with that. Uh, also, why has Haley got five foot vision range? Distance you can see without any light should be zero. She should be blind without that light. But of course, she'll be able to see that light through there. Okay, good, right. Sorry about that, bit of a segue, trying to, trying to sort that one out. Okay, uh, nothing else of interest in here, uh, apart from the violet fungi. Good. All right, um, that's it. So we've managed to do seven of the areas, okay? And we managed to do sort of like seven in the next one, and then that will leave us just a few to finish off this. So a um, bit of a weird one, bit of a slow one today, not very exciting at all, not really anything new or interesting. We're just chucking out monsters, chucking in descriptions, uh, and doing a little, only a little bit of lighting, because the whole lot is dark otherwise, uh, and a couple of item piles that we've dumped in there. It's really quite simple. Um, we haven't even got levels or anything like that to deal with in here at all at this point. The closest we've got to that is these little tunnel bits that we sorted. So um, yeah, not very exciting one. If you managed to watch this to the end, well done. Uh, and just a reminder that uh, if you have watched to the end as well, that um, videos are going to be really slow um, for the next week, just because I'm away uh, and I may not get any out at all, but I will do my best. You take care. Bye-bye.